In a surprising change of pace, Payday 3's latest update, Update 1.13 has released, and it's easily the best update to come out as part of Operation Medic Bag, and I'd even go as far as to say it's the best update the game's received since its launch. There's quite a lot to go over with this update, as it has a surprising amount of content. Well, a surprising amount of content for a Payday 3 update. Relativity is everything. The real meat on the bones of this update is very much the addition of Quick Play, which now allows for players to queue for a specific difficulty and join a heist, either before or after it's been started. One of Payday 3's biggest issues was just how hard it was to find a game with other players, being they'd have to queue for a specific heist on a specific difficulty. Then, you'd also run the risk of joining a lobby of stealth players when you're wanting to play loud, and then also vice versa. With the addition of Quick Play though, you can just queue up for a specific difficulty, wait for it to find you a match, and then you'll be put into a lobby for a heist of your chosen difficulty that's either about to start, or has already started. Of course, it isn't a completely perfect system, and it does have some fundamental issues, but none of them I should take away from the fact that the system actually works, which is weirdly surprising for Starbreeze. Of course, the big issue Quick Play has is that you aren't able to choose preferred heist tactics, whether you want to play heist in stealth, in loud, or in both. I've joined a ton of stealth lobbies through Quick Play when I've been wanting to play loud, and I mean a ton of stealth lobbies. I think for every loud lobby I got, I ran into about four other stealth ones. Sure, I might have just gone unlucky, but my general point still stands. Being able to queue for a specific heist tactic would just be a great improvement. Some people get on payday just to play loud, some people get on payday just to play stealth. Yeah, some players will be happy to do both, but there will always be people who just want to play only loud or only stealth. And then I have a pretty nitpicky issue with quick play, in that you can't choose a heist playlist, which I think would be a major quality of life improvement. Let's say you want to play payday 3, but you really don't like a specific heist, like 99 boxes for example, and I mean really don't like it. You don't like it so much you wouldn't even touch it with a 10 foot pole. With a heist playlist you could craft a heist whitelist, choose specific heists you want to queue for, and by extension, heists you don't want to queue for, letting you avoid heists that you don't want to play. It would be pretty minor, but it'd make things a lot more streamlined and comfortable for players, as players could just hop onto quick play with a selection of heists they know they'd be wanting to play. You want to queue for quick heists? You can queue for quick heists. You want to queue for long heists? You can queue for long heists. You want to queue for anything in particular? You can queue for anything in particular. Then, we also have the addition of post-game party up, where you can opt in to stick together as a group after finishing a heist with other people. After you party up together though, you're just put back on the main menu. Sure, it works making you stick together as a party, the system very much works as intended on that front, but the way it's been executed leaves a lot to be desired. Especially since you have to opt into it too, rather than just sticking together by default like in Payday the Heist and Payday 2. It's small, but it just makes it a hassle to try and stick together with players you meet in game. Of course though, it's only inevitable that the question of is it acceptable that quick play and post game party up have only been added now will arise. The short, and hopefully obvious answer, is no. In no world should we really be getting excited about such small yet impactful additions being added to the game this long after release, but it is one of those things we have to at least try and see the silver lining of. Sure, it took them ages to deliver on things this basic and that really should have been features on launch, or at the bare minimum, added right after launch on like a day one patch or something, but they did it, I guess. It's an issue Payday 3 keeps on having, where it just takes so long for such small things to be done like this, and it makes me genuinely wonder. How much of this is because Starbreeze is getting thinly spread with other things like Project Baxter, or just because they're incompetent? I digress though, Starbreeze being bad at making video games is something already talked to death about on the internet and I would only really be saying the same things you've either realised yourself or heard elsewhere before. As part of the update too, the causes for some of the game's most frequent crashes have been fixed. I haven't had Payday 3 crash on me in ages, but this is still only good news. After all, the game crashing less is always a good thing. Well, to be fair, I haven't really played much in the past few months, so that might actually have something to do with the fact that I haven't crashed recently. Surprisingly though, Update 1.13 comes with a new addition, being the first new throwable add to the game since launch, the Shot Grenade. The shot grenade is pretty self-explanatory as to what it does. You throw it, it explodes, and it releases an electrical field, shocking enemies who are caught in it, similar to that if you were to shoot the battery packs on zappers. However, it isn't exactly the same as the electrical shocks given out by the battery packs on zappers, as the grenade's electrical shocks will instantly kill shields, zappers, and techies who are caught in the radius. The logic is a little bit weird on the shot grenades, but I'm willing to let it slide as it makes for a pretty interesting addition, bridging the gap between being a throwable purely for damage like the frag grenade and being a throwable purely for crowd control like the flashbang. It's not able to benefit from as many skills as flashbangs or smoke bombs are able to, but I think it's a worthwhile trade-off for the fact that the shot grenades are able to fill a niche and that it can be used for both killing enemies and also for stunning them at the same time. The shot grenade also helps with an issue that Payday 3 has, in that there's just not much content to play with. Yeah, the game's got a decent amount of content, but with how accustomed people got to Payday 2's massive arsenal of weaponry, it led to a lot of people getting very bored of it very quickly, and the addition of the shot grenade gives us something new to play around with. You can now also vote to skip the heist intro cinematics, which is a pretty good addition. I always thought they were annoying, and I was surprised they weren't skippable like the intros in Payday 2. 
Again, it's one of those quality of life additions that really should have been at launch, but I guess it's better late than never. In a slightly out of the blue change, armor repair kits have been given static spawn spots on maps, similar to that of armor packets and first aid kits. You can find them on every heist at different spots, usually being in the lockers and camera rooms, alongside the ammo packets. This is a very welcome addition in my eyes, making surviving on armor a lot easier as you can use them to repair armor chunks or having to get armor repair kits from trades or killing dozers, but I do have to wonder, why wasn't this done sooner? Well, more accurately, why wasn't this done before they added the adaptive armor? This is just such a no-brainer addition to the game, and it just felt so out of place that armor was the only resource you couldn't find on the map, so I'm just genuinely baffled as to why it's only being added now. I think it just links back to an issue Payday 3 has, where they just make massive fixes that they quickly cobble together instead of making any actual reasonable changes. But, eh, who cares at this point? It's not like anyone actually uses the normal armor types anymore, it's everyone and their mother is now using the adaptive armor and fortitude. Moving on though, you can now jump in the back of the escape van. Yeah, it's small, and it's not even really a quality of life addition as much as it is just a neat detail. It's a very small addition, but it's one of those things that goes a long way in making Payday 3 actually start to feel like a Payday game with small details like that, which is something the game just desperately needs as it feels so soulless at times. Unique weapon inspect animations have been added to the CAR-4, the KE-59, the Northwest B-9 and the VF-7S, as well as the weapons receiving some general animation improvements. Though there have been some non-weapon specific animation improvements, with the weapons in first person view models now being held differently while crouching. There's also been some adjustments made to first person view model animations while sprinting, which is weird as they're undocumented. The weapons definitely didn't move as heavily and as close to your face before, so this was either just an undocumented change or as a bug because of the new crouching animations. Knowing Starbreeze though, one is most certainly more likely than the other. Oh, and Vlad got a new contract to portrait. He, uh, he definitely looks different, I'll say that much. In a very missable change though, a lot more voice lines are now being used in-game. Most notably, Shade will now call out when overkill weapons are ready to be called in, and Heisters will talk to hostages when they're being used as human shields. It's a small change, but it's something I've actually got to give props to Starbreeze for. And also, there's a teaser for the upcoming LMG hidden in Touch the Sky, showing off its model, as well as a message saying not to break the glass until a scribbled out day in 2024. It's a pretty cool detail, and it's a very nice way to build up hype for when it drops, which will hopefully be soon, probably alongside the Boys in Blue DLC now that I start to think about it. Overall though, Update 1.13 has been an incredibly solid update for Payday 3. The addition of Quick Play, albeit a very basic and rudimentary version of it, alongside post-game party up is an incredible step in the right direction, and actually makes playing Payday 3 a lot more enjoyable of an experience. Sure, the update leaves a lot to be desired with the execution of its additions and some of the game's cracks are still very much visible, but the journey of a thousand miles starts with one step, or whatever that philosopher once said, I don't know. And hey, the shot grain is a pretty fun addition too, so it's got that going for it. I'm curious as to what other people think of this update though. I know for certain it's gotten me back in the game and I've been playing a few heists with quick play in the shot grenades, but I'd like to hear what other people think of the update. Do you think Operation Medibag is starting to show hope? Or do you think Starbreeze is still just running a fool's errand trying to save the game? I'd love to hear what other people think of it, so feel free to drop a comment about it. As usual though, I've been Cookie Dough, and have a good one.